Hello and welcome to another episode of the AWS Ninja. And for this episode, I'd like to take you through some of the options you have when you try to mitigate a false positive triggered by AWS WAF. False positives are actually a, an alert or a, a blocking of a request that happened in a mistake. So good traffic being blocked by some, some sort of a rule match. So there are a few ways to mitigate these false positives, basically allowing the good traffic through. Uh, and I'll take you th through some of these uh, possibilities using some of the terms that we use uh, around the, uh, AWS WAF Web ACL. So let, let's first create just a sample rule in our Web ACL, currently just an empty Web ACL. Let's add one of the uh, rules a rule set that has the most rules in them. And that's the core rule set. I won't switch them over to count. I'll, I'll leave them at, at block because without them being in block mode, they won't be blocking any traffic. And so they won't trigger a false positive. So we have this rule. Let's have a look at what, what goes inside that managed rule. Let's click edit to see it clearly. And you, as you see, there is a bunch of sub rules inside that rule. Some of these rules may trigger false positives. So it's not really rules, it's also rule groups. So within with each of these sub rules, there are a bunch of signatures that might match patterns in your traffic, good or bad. In case they match good traffic, well, that's when you have a false positive. So one way to mitigate a false positive, let's say you have you, you see plenty of alerts go on uh, in CloudWatch or your, your WAF logs that say that you have a cross-site cross scripting violation in body. That means that you have a post body uh, coming from the user side, and that body contains something that triggers the cross-site scripting body violation. So the easiest thing you could do is just go into the rule and disable this violation or basically switch that into count mode. And by that, problem solved, right? Uh, you won't be hitting any of these false positives. You won't be blocking traffic. But obviously, as you already guessed, there is a downside to that because now all cross-site scripting requests uh, inside the body will be overlooked. So that's probably not, not a very good uh, way to mitigate false positives. So. Another thing we might be doing, because the, the order in which rules appear in a web ACL is crucial, and AWS WAF parses traffic according to the order of rules, if we create a rule on top of the managed rule that had a false positive, well, that will allow us to allow traffic before it gets blocked by that specific managed rule. So, for example, I'll add a new rule, I'll add my own rule, and this will be false positive mitigation rule, right? And uh, I'll, let's just say that I want to match requests, all the requests that go into a specific path, let's say matches um, post to form, that's the URI, and I can run um, text transformations, you know, lower, lowercase, uppercase, whatever is required to match all of the requests. In this case, I would use this rule, this match, and I would allow traffic. I'll add the rule, and I'll make sure that on the next page, on the rules order page, I'll move it up. So the false positive mitigation rule will be on top of the managed rule. As you already probably guessed again, this is too coarse. So basically I'm allowing all traffic that hit this URI. Well, that's no good, right? This is not so good. This is too coarse, but it allows me to keep on enforcing the sub rule for cross-site scripting in body. Right? So I have now a rule, a condition that says if traffic is hitting the uh, post to form URL, 
it will be allowed, and if not, it will go on to be inspected by this subrule, by the rule after, uh, which will catch the cross-site scripting of, um, attack if it comes in any other URL, right? So it's a little better than disabling the entire rule. Now you can make this rule as specific as you can, right? So not only does the request has to match the post to form URI, let's say it's an end condition, and I also want a uh, body that contains XSS. So this means that I don't only allow the request entirely, I will only allow it if I found, if AWS WAF found an XSS injection in the body. And of course, we can also do some tra uh, tr tr text transformations here, uh, just to, to try and catch all of the evasions that hackers would try to deploy in order for us to miss this uh, attack. So this is a better way, a more specific rule, and I can add more conditions and or and such in order to make this false positive mitigation rule way more specific than just allowing any kind of traffic. So let's leave it at that. So that would be the second way to mitigate false positives. A third way to mitigate false positives would be to use AWS WAF labels. And by labels, AWS WAF allows you to conduct some sort of inter-rule signaling. So each request, as it goes through a WebACL rule base, every time it matches a rule and does not terminate, so basically hits a count, it will label the request and move on to the rules after. So by that, we can now refer to the labels on a, on a request that were accumulated during the lifetime of that request. And I'll show you what I mean. So let me go back to the managed rule group, uh, managed rule set, sorry, that contained the cross-site scripting violation. And I'll switch that back to count. So now again, requests containing XSS won't be blocked. They will only be counted. Let's, let, let's remove this rule so we don't get confused. Okay, so now we have the cross-site scripting in body set to count, meaning it will not get blocked. Now, after the common rule set, I would like to add another rule that says, if I found a cross-site scripting attack in a specific page, I will let it through. Otherwise, I will, I will have it blocked, right? So the right way to phrase this rule would be like so. Bypass URL for XSS. And again, it would be an end kind of a rule. I would start with has a label and that label would be cross-site scripting in body. So if a request has a label cross-site scripting body, which was attached by the previous rule, and it is not, let's say, the URI that we mentioned before, I would block it. So any attempt to inject cross-site scripting inside the body, except for ones that target this URL, will get blocked. So basically what we've done here is we still enforce cross-site scripting protection at the body, but we only allow this specific match to be bypassed with this URL. And again, these conditions can be as specific or as loose as, as you choose uh, for them to be with simple and or statements. So now we have another protection that says, oh, I, I still want to enforce cross-site cross -site scripting in body unless it matches this URL. And this would be the most specific way to mitigate false positive. The only thing that got left for me to do is to move the rule down 
because this rule will label and count and this rule will enforce. So the order here is important. That was it for, for false positive mitigation techniques with AWS WAF. There is a lot to be said about this subject and topic. And actually, there are even a few more methodologies in order to do so. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.